So next up, with more scratch pads, but a different kind on here, Ed Baker. It wouldn't be a talk about technology without some cats or anything, but we will come on to them in a little bit. So scratch pads, citizen science. And citizen science is a big part of Vibrant. Um, so Coma, um, done by the Lenox Center for Marine Research, they're going to give divers these underwater cards to identify mainly fish. And they go out and dive with people and get their records and put them online. And so it's the start of a good citizen science project. But they found a few problems. And most of those do with the organization, the amount of effort they have to put in. So if you've ever organized a kind of BioBlitz style event or something where there's loads of people collaborating, it takes a lot of work. So they want to move to a kind of more community driven. So the diving schools kind of organize this for themselves. And also as part of eMonocot, we went down to Lyme Regis a couple of years. And the first year, um, the Lyme Regis Development Trust was doing this digital live science experiment. And so this was our contribution. It was taking scratch pads and simplifying the interface so that you could use it for a kind of citizen science project. And so we have a little bit of background in this. But where do we go from here? And we have vibrant deliverables that we actually need to deliver a citizen science module for scratch pads, whatever that may be. And so we had a meeting here organized by um, myself and Sarah Fulvetter from the Hellenic Center for Marine Research. We kind of came up with a few plans. First of all, it's going to be on scratch pads. So they're taking their coma, the diving system, and putting it into scratch pads. It was in Drupal anyway, which is the same backbone as the scratch pads. And so we kind of considered a few things. What are our strengths in this area? Um, first of all, we've done it already. And um, we can handle this kind of data. And we have experience working with communities. So it's up to over 500 now. So we're kind of fairly well set to start tackling some of these problems. But there are, are a couple of places where we fall short. Scratch pads, the traditional interface, kind of more geared towards taxonomists and citizen science. Um, there's a lot of data you can put in, and most of it, if you're a citizen science, is more of a complication than a kind of cause for joy. And we don't really deal with these yet. So we come up with a roadmap. Focus on data management and analysis. These are kind of the core the core tool, tools of Vibrant, of scratch pads, is we don't really care what data you put in. We just provide the tools for managing that data. Simplifying the user interface, make things as easy for people to contribute and collaborate as possible. And then this kind of came a bit later, actually, when Sarah Noah in Berlin recently, is try and find a way of getting smartphone support into this system. So yeah, that's pretty much done. Thankfully for um, Simon and I, at least. Um, there's a new developer uh, in Crete who's going to be doing the, taking what we've done and tidying it up and making it a kind of packageable product. product. And then the smartphone support. So there's a group in Berlin, Animals and Plants, they take GBIF data, work out what's around you, um, kind of compare that to pre-made checklists, and you can go out, take a photo of something on your phone, upload it, it's geolocated, you can identify it, other people can identify it later, so we want to Put that into scratch pads. I'm going to rush a bit because Vince is looming. But then the question is, we don't really like doing one-off solutions. So how do we make this a bit more generic? And so can other things feed into scratch pads using the same mechanism? And so citizen engineering, not citizen science, is people who kind of take electronics and make tools and physical things which interact with the world. And so this is a, it's a project which you kind of put in your plants, put into the internet, and it sends you a tweet when your plant needs watering. Not the best ecological data set in the world, but if you scale it up, maybe have a hundred of them, you can start to kind of work out what's going on in the forest. Back to cats. A cat's kind of a great tool. You can kind of put a camera on it and a GPS and it, watch it do its thing. So yeah, that's what the people who made this tool's cat does. It kind of wanders around, quite interesting. Again, scale it up, start looking at problems like this. And so if people are making these tools for fun, they're often much cheaper and sometimes more accurate than the very expensive things you can buy specifically for the purpose. So maybe we can engage with them. And so smartphone support, that's coming very soon, probably in the next few months. But we also need to be aware of providing anybody with a way to store and manage their data. OK, thanks very much, Ed. Interesting. Interesting transition there, moving sort of from software to hardware and ecological observations, getting that data in.